Hello there and welcome to SquadTube. I'm Ken and I will allow take you through the uh, product review of the ASL Journal ECU1 which you can see here on the screen. This is the front page. Uh, the Journal ECU1 is from 1999 and uh, it was actually the first uh, product from uh, Multiman Publishing after they took over from Avalon Hill. And this is why you have this uh, welcoming page here. Um, let's take a look at the uh, index here. We have uh, some articles. Smoke gets in your eyes is the first one. <clears throat> what to do if you have a tin can. We have the uh, Red Barricades CG4. Bled White is in, uh, in here as well. There's a series replay. Scouts out. And uh, some chapter A S historical solitaire as L. I will not be going into <coughs> details about that. We have an article called "Personal Tents: Welcome to the Jungle and Run Through the Jungle." So, there's a lot of stuff in here. Let's uh, let's kick off with the first one. "Smoke Gets in Your Eyes" by Tom Huntington. Um. Well, this article here is, uh, as it says, uh, the rundown on smoke. Every type of smoke. Um, on the first page here, you have the different types listed. Uh, there's a nice graphic here on the on the second page with the height of the smoke. Tom is taking us through the infantry smoke grenades, the white phosphorus grenades. An ordnance firing smoke and the vehicles and smoke, the terrain, and uh, a little conclusion there. I've read this uh, article several times, and uh, it's um, it's a must if you uh, if you want to learn about uh, the smoke in the ASL, which is a very important thing. You should definitely read this article here. So this alone is worth buying. Uh, journal issue one for that reason. So the second uh, article here is by David Ali. It's called what to do if you can have if you have a tin can. And uh, what uh, David does is he uh, takes us uh, through some of the disadvantages and advantages of smaller tanks in the, from the beginning of the war. Uh, they are very slow, uh, usually have weak armor, weak main armament, and low tech, no radio contact. Um, but he lists a number of things also that where the size and the, and the shape of the, of the tank really doesn't matter. A tank is still a tank. Uh, I will not go through all, all of them, but for example, um, small arms fire, no AFV can be harmed by small arms fire, no matter if it's a tin can or a king tiger. So, and he has uh, a lot of those uh, listed here. It's very interesting stuff to read, actually. And then a paragraph about the advantages of the of tin cans. Um, the previous article is very interesting. This one, when you reach the level of playing around with the uh, with vehicles. You should sit down and read this one as well. I can, uh, I can say that. Uh, yeah. Next here is, um, as I said before, the Red Barricades CT4, bled white. A couple of pages for that. If you haven't uh, played Red Barricades before, you should probably start with uh, some uh, some of the other CGs. But this one is. Uh, it's pretty good as well, so nice to see that. This next article is uh, the series replay with uh, J.R. Tracy and Chris Kavanagh. So um, I'm not usually uh, much fond of these uh, series replays because it's a lot of reading, and you have to uh, you have to read every role and all, all that stuff. So uh, if you're really interested in this scenario, it's uh, a109 scouts out from, uh, from the 97 annual 
Um, and if, if you're going to play this particular scenario, maybe it's uh, it's worth skimming through this. Um, but otherwise, you can uh, can more or less skip this one. I am doing that. Here we have the uh, the chapter S uh, on the Red Barricade Solitaire ASL. I'm not going into any details about that. Also, there are four missions for uh, Solitaire Red Barricades. Um, I will not show them either here, so... Oh yeah, there they are. Going through there. And more of the series replay. Boom, boom, boom. And the next article is called Personal Tense. This is simply an article uh, by Mark C. Nixon where he uh, takes us through 10 of his uh, favorite scenarios. Uh, very briefly, uh, again, if you want to play one of those scenarios, you can uh, skim through these, uh, these uh, paragraphs here. <clears throat> Next up is Welcome to the Jungle by Robert Volke. Now, if you don't play PTO, you can skip, uh, of course, this article. But if you want to plunge into the the Pacific Theater, um, I very much recommend this uh, this uh, article here. Um, and that article is backed up by another one called, called "Run Through the Jungle." by Matt Shostak. Um, they deal with a little bit different things, but uh, both are very nice reading. If you want to become acquainted with uh, PTO, of course, if you are a growth nerd of PTO, maybe yeah, you can still find some, some value in these articles. But uh, yeah, it's, it's very good if you are new uh, uh, to the PTO as well. Some debriefing. And I think uh, I think that's it. Uh, what else does the uh, journal contain? Well, it has um, 12 scenarios. The first one being J1, of course. Urban Gorillas. This is a scenario set in Vienna, Austria, 9th of April, 1945. So this is uh, right up near the end of the war. Two bots. We have some uh, couple of overlays. X8, X15. Be aware of that, please. Uh, six and a half turns. This is um, what we can call a typical late war German uh, versus Russian scenario. We have Panther on the on the German side. So Panther force, 88 millimeter gun, SS squads. The works really. And of course, they're up against uh, a huge force of Russians here with uh, 12 lead squads. They have flamethrower, T-34, 85, three of those. Two uh, Josef Stalin 2Ms, one of the best tanks <coughs> of the war. So there's a lot of uh, bang for the buck in this scenario. And if we take a look at the, uh, the ROA stats here, Urban Guerrillas J1 it has a lot of planes in this scenario. Uh, the Russians have recorded 174 wins with the Germans 133. So it's a little bit skewed towards the um, the Russians here. You might want to play with the with the German balance if you if you dive into this one. Next up is J2. Batlin Buckeyes, and uh, this takes us to the Philippines, loose on 29th of January, 1945. Um, again, two, uh, two boards in play here, six and a half turns. We have the uh, U.S. Army, so it's not, uh, it's not U.S. Marine Corps, it's just Army units here. Um, <coughs> They have some armor support, uh, heavy machine guns, 
lots of squats. And the Japanese, as you can see, have all kinds of types of squats. And also some uh, some tanks here, you can see it's a uh, type uh, 97B, six of those. Um, not the best of the bunch, of course, it's Japanese tanks, but uh, there you go, a rare, a rare PTO scenario with both uh, tanks and infantry combined arms. Definitely worth worth trying out on uh, Roa. It's uh, 78 for the Japanese and 46 for the Americans, so almost almost two to one there for the Japanese, which um, speaks for uh, an American balance there in that scenario. Next up, J3, a Sunday stroll. And I'll let me just mention that the reason why I don't show the special scenario rules is for copyright uh, reasons. Uh, you want to see those, you will have to buy the, the product. So um, there you go. J3, a Sunday stroll here is, um, <coughs> if I remember, a night scenario. Let me see. No, it's just getting dark. Uh, this is Como. In France, 12th of June 1944. It's uh, a few days after D-Day. Single board, but with uh, three overlays. Please be aware of uh, of that. Um, seven and a half turns. Germans have six six and a half squads. They have uh, a Panzerwagen and a half track and some. Uh, some into tank guns. They're up against the Americans with the 12 first line squads, two M4s and another M4 coming in later in the game. And this one is ranked on ROA as German 18, American 13. So it's um, it's pretty balanced uh, as well. J4 next, Wet Savas. This is on Java, so this is uh, PTO, 5th of March 1942. Two boards, 43 and 33, along with four wellies. So make sure you have those if you wanna, you wanna play this. So now it's quite long, it's eight and a half turns, with the uh, with the Dutch setting up uh, various first line and green squads and with a heavy mortar and then the Japanese have they have some uh, some armor which is uh, well what can I say armor factor 2 and 1 against an anti-tank rifle it's uh, even the LMG uh, yeah it's not the best but we're used to that they have a lot of squats though 8 first lines and 3 second lines and that's really all they need, the Japanese. Uh, on Roa, we are looking at Japanese 19 and Dutch 13. So, like the previous scenario, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit skewed to the one side, but uh, you can call it uh, pretty balanced. This one. Let me uh, move on to J5. Bissery Loves Company. This is uh, in Bissery, Holland, 3rd of January 1945. One uh, one board, board 42, with some, uh, some overlays there as well. Lots of overlays in, the, in these scenarios, I guess. Uh, eight turns, we have the uh, Americans uh, with uh, with ten, uh, sorry, nine squad equivalents. An HMG, a 10 minus 2 liter, that can be a pretty lethal combination right there. Against the SS Panzer Grenadiers and SS Panzer Division elements from Panzer Division 12. Uh, 12 squads of SS and they're supported by two Panzer 4s and some, uh, some half tracks as well. It's pretty interesting this uh, little compact board with a lot of turns, so a lot of stuff can happen in uh, in no space. Let's see on Roar, Bissery Loves Company Germany, 
Uh, German 25 victories and American 11. So this one is um, unfortunately a bit unbalanced uh, towards the Germans. Please be aware of that if you uh, want to fire up this, uh, this scenario. Right, so moving on to J6. Saint Barthélemy Bash in uh, France, 7 of August 1944. This is a uh, deluxe, deluxe scenario. You can see that by the by the boards over here. Lots of overlays there as well. Only five and a half turn. Let's see what we got to play with here. American eight squads, HMG, four anti tank uh, sorry anti tank guns, 76 L. That's serious. Some serious stuff. What do they have to shoot down? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> two uh, two Panthers. Uh, in group B along with uh, two Panzer IV and in group C you have four Panthers with an armor leader so it could uh, could be pretty nasty actually um, depending on what the German player uh, picks picks there so uh, Roa has a Ptolemy Bash as German 14 American 9 so that's fine, I guess. <clears throat> Moving on to J7. Slow and steady. This is Hugh Kong Valley, Burma. So we're back in the PTO, 5th of March 1944. Two half boards dotted against each other here with a single OLA. Eight and a half turns, so it's quite a long scenario as well, with not that much, not, not that many forces here. Let's see the uh, nine squads for the Japanese and 15 for the Chinese so this is the first uh, scenario here with uh, in this pack with the Chinese they have some uh, some armor support and the Japanese has uh, have a machine gun as well well again a lots of uh, squads on a tight spot so it could be quite interesting on Raw we have the Chinese for recorded 38 victories and the Japanese 27. So that's uh, that's pretty okay as, as well I guess. Uh, a little bit on the Chinese side there. Right, moving on to J8. Block busting in Bokrysk. Bokrysk in Russia, 29th of June 1944. Again, two uh, two half boards dotted against each other. Eight turns. Uh, the Germans have, uh, well, standard equipment, I would say. First line squads, 76 anti tank gun, more first line squads, and a 50 anti tank gun. And then they can put down a Stuck 3G and a Marta 3M and some wires and here comes the Red Army rolling with 11 squads here three of them are elite flamethrower heavy machine gun ISU 152 SU 85 two of those and an infantry gun as well and then on turn two eight more squads two of them elite and some KV 1S, some some old tanks there, but they can still pack a, a punch there. Interesting scenario, really. Um, on Raw, we have uh, German 44, Russian 56, so uh, pretty balanced scenario. I can recommend trying this one out. Moving on to J9. This is again a PTO scenario, a stiff fight. Um, this is one of my uh, my favorite scenarios actually. It's uh, in uh, Malaya, December 41. We have less than a board to uh, to play around with. Six and a half turns, and this is uh, the Gurkhas. Um, the British have uh, seven Gurkha squads and some wire against uh, eight Japanese squads. Four of those are elite and four first line squads so a lot of hand to hand combat going on in this scenario is uh, really down and dirty 
<clears throat> Japanese have three tanks as well. They will not play that big of a role in this scenario, but uh, they're nice to have anyway. Let's check out uh, J9 on uh, Roa. We have Gurkha 91, Japanese 98. It doesn't get much more balanced than that. Again, I can really recommend this um, this scenario. Designers Steve Peterson and Brian Hughes. So there you go. Good job, guys. J10, Armored Fist. We are in uh, Trollak, Malaya. 6th of January 1942, again PTO scenario, so it's good we have those two uh, PTO articles in, uh, in the journal with all these PTO scenarios. Two half boards again with uh, an overlay, six and a half turns, and here we have the, um, the Sutherland Highlanders, four squads against the Japanese four squads and a little bit of armor on both sides, so small skirmish here. J10, Armored Fist, British with 13 victories and Japanese 33. Unfortunately, that's uh, pretty unbalanced, uh, favoring the uh, the Japanese here. So, if you want to play this, uh, please uh, add some balance to the to the British, I guess. And uh, moving on to J11, it's called In the Old Tradition. It's in Kampa, Malaya again, PTO scenario, and it's a deluxe scenario. Two deluxe ports here with lots of overlays again. We're in December 41. So we have the uh, Japanese against the British. <coughs> Excuse me. Five Japanese squads. Two of them are elite. They have some uh, some trenches and foxholes to uh, to hide in. And a single, uh, a single tank coming in as well. Against the 12th second line, mind you. Second line. British squads here from the Punjab Indian 15th Indian Brigade, but they do have a 10 minus 2 leader, so that's uh, that's always nice to have. J11 is currently Japanese 23, British 5, so um, I'm sorry, but uh, pretty unbalanced in there as well uh, towards the Japanese again. So there you go. And the last scenario of the magazine is J12, Jungle Fighters. Uh, this is in Jahor Baru, Malaya. Again, PTO. Lots of PTO scenarios in this uh, in this magazine. A single half board, six turns. Um, Thirteen British squads against twenty Japanese second line squads. So lots of Lots of activity going on on, uh, on just a half board here, so um, that could be a pretty interesting scenario to play. I haven't, I don't think I've, I'm not sure if I've played this one actually. I might have. Uh, on uh, Roa, it's uh, 50 for the British and 48 for the Japanese, so again, uh, pretty balanced scenario. Again, Steve Patterson and Brian Hughes for the, for the design. Good job, guys. And um, <clears throat> that's it. That's the uh, articles and the scenarios of uh, Journal 1. I uh, hope you enjoy, enjoyed this episode, guys. And uh, please subscribe and like uh, if you like it. And uh, I'll be back soon with uh, more videos. Bye-bye.